Welcome to this lecture. Here we will discuss what is economic load dispatch and we will also understand how we can achieve it. Let us consider a scenario in which there is a power plant having two generators, generator G1 and generator G2. G1 is having the capacity of 200 megawatt and G2 is also having the capacity of 200 megawatt. But there is one difference between G1 and G2. G1 is an old generator manufactured in 1980. G1 is an old generator whereas G2 is a new generator. Let's say it is manufactured in 2008. It is new generator. This is one very important difference between G1 and G2. And if we talk about the cost to produce the electricity, then G1 will require more cost to produce the electricity due to aging. Let's say G1 requires X1 for producing 1 megawatt and let's say G2 requires X2 for producing 1 megawatt where X1 and X2 are the costs and as we have already discussed G1 is older generator so because of aging X1 will be larger than X2 so cost to produce 1 megawatt of the electricity in case of G1 will be higher than the cost to produce 1 megawatt of electricity in case of generator G2. I hope this point is clear to you. Now we will understand what is economic load dispatch. The two generators are used to satisfy the load whose load curve you can see on the screen. So the most economical way to satisfy the load is known as economic load dispatch. We need to operate generator G1 and generator G2 keeping this point in mind and at the same time we also need to satisfy the load. So this is what we have to do in economic load dispatch and once we understand this example it will be more clear to us. In this particular case we have the load curve, the daily load curve and from 0 to 10 hours you can see the power demand is 250 megawatt. So we need to supply 250 megawatt using generator G1 and generator G2. G2 can produce the electricity at a cheaper rate because it is a new generator. So out of 250 megawatt we will try to produce 200 megawatt using generator G2 because this is the maximum capacity of generator G2. So here from 0 to 10 we will use generator G2 to produce 200 megawatt and the remaining demand is 50 megawatt which we will satisfy using generator G1. So G1 we will use to produce 50 megawatt. So in this way we will satisfy the load from 0 to 10 hours. Now from 10 hours to this is 19, from 10 hours to 19 hours the demand is 350 megawatt. So what we can do, we can run generator G2 to the fullest and uh, we will generate 200 megawatt, 200 megawatt and the remaining demand is 150 megawatt which we will obtain from generator G1. And from 19 to 24 hours, the demand is again 250. So we will follow this scheme of production. So this is how we need to satisfy the load. And this process is known as economic load dispatch. Now there is one important thing regarding this. The economic load dispatch is not calculated for the dams because we do not require to purchase the fuel to run the hydroelectric power station. So we always calculate the economic load dispatch where we purchase the fuel like thermal power station, diesel power station and a nuclear power station. I think this point is clear now and uh, this particular topic is very important for the gate exam. If you want to appear in this exam then you may find question on this topic. So it is very important. Now we will discuss few other points related to this topic. Generally you will find question having the fuel cost characteristics. I will explain what is fuel cost characteristics. What is fuel cost characteristics? X axis is for the power in megawatt and the Y axis is for I subscript C. I subscript C is known as incremental cost in rupee 
per megawatt hour i will quickly write it down incremental cost in rupee per megawatt per megawatt hour and uh, it will have the characteristics of two or more generators let's say we have two generators and uh, the characteristic of first generator is like this and the characteristics of second generator is like this this is for g1 and this is for g2 now by using this we can easily find out the economic load dispatch the generator having the lower incremental cost is loaded more this is the most important point in this lecture the generator with the lower incremental cost is loaded more and if we compare the two generators g1 and g2 then you can see the incremental cost is lower for generator g2 and because of this we will load generator g2 more than generator g1 so this is how you have to analyze the fuel cost characteristics and find out the economic load dispatch now we will also discuss few other cases and for that i will quickly paste the fuel cost characteristics of generator g1 and generator g2 and now we will find the economic load dispatch from 100 to 150 megawatt you can see the incremental cost of generator g1 is lower than the generator g2 so from 100 to 150 g1 is loaded more and at 150 you can see the incremental cost of g1 and g2 is same so both g1 and g2 are loaded are loaded equally and from 150 to 200 the incremental cost of generator g2 is smaller than generator g1 so during this period g2 is loaded more i hope this example is clear to you now we will take the third example the third and the last example this example is very important here you can see the characteristics of three generators g1 g2 and g3 and uh, you can see the incremental cost of g3 is constant it is not increasing but it is constant and when this happens we always load g3 more g3 is loaded more because to produce electricity using generator g3 will cost same as incremental cost ic is not changing so always load g3 more and after that you have to compare between g1 and g2 like we did in these two examples so i think the example number three is clear to you and regarding the numericals we will solve two or more numerical problems in the coming presentations and uh, for numericals you have to keep one thing in your mind if there are two generators g1 and g2 and ic1 is the incremental cost of generator g1 and ic2 ic2 is the incremental cost of generator g2 then for minimum cost ic1 must be equal to ic2 this is very important and we will use it while solving the problems so this is all for this lecture if you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section